Hello and welcome back. In a moment, we'll look at how technology could improve travel. But first, here are some other stories to keep an eye on. A study by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development has found Africa's air pollution is causing more premature deaths on the continent than unsafe water or childhood malnutrition. Tens of thousands of women across Argentina are protesting against gender-related violence following the rape and murder of a 16-year-old girl last week. The group, known as Not One Less, organized the protests, which were also held in other Latin American countries. And three volunteer firefighters have died after trying to put out a fire in a shoe factory in the capital of Peru. Investigators are looking into the exact cause of the fire. Now, companies are spending more of their marketing budget than ever before, creating and improving their apps to try to engage with customers. The question is, do we really want an app for everything we do and every place we visit? Well, airports seem to think so. Research shows worldwide 90% of them are undertaking either a major program or a trial project related to apps. Now, Google has just launched a new travel app called Google Trips, which organizes all your information in one place. Chloe Culpin, app prizes us of the latest apps. Much has changed in the travel world over the years, but one thing has remained constant, the stress of it. Finding the hotel before or somewhere to park before you fly. But like, traveling to the airport is the hardest bit. The most stressful thing for me is going through security. Um, and what really annoys me is queuing. What am I going to put into the luggage, you know, in case it gets lost? But in a world where there's so much technology to make life easier, why is this so? Virtually every part of the journey has its own app. The taxi company, the airport, the airline. But a study from market researcher Nielsen found that over the past three years, the number of apps we use regularly per month remained constant at around 26. Despite this apparent app fatigue, airlines in particular want passengers to make the download. She's okay, because Ashley already downloaded Google Trips. Google has just released the Google Trips app, which has many features, including storing boarding passes, maps and day plans once you're there. Could this become one of our regular apps? Much work is going into how the travel experience can be streamlined. Some airlines, including British Airways, Qantas and KLM, are looking to roll out digital luggage tags to save a new paper sticker having to be attached for each flight and much research into biometric identification is taking place. If an international agreement could be reached, it may be possible to travel using our eyes as ID, eliminating the need for a boarding pass. But while paperless travel may be quicker, it does mean there's no handy bookmark for the holiday read. That is, if you aren't using an e-book. Chloe Culpin, reporting for Insight. So to discuss this further, I'm joined by Nick Coleman, who is the course leader for aviation management at London Metropolitan University. Uh, Nick, good to have you with us. Uh, so airlines are all investing or planning to invest a huge amount in these uh, travel apps just to try and get passengers through the airport. I mean, we're talking serious money here. Yeah. Well, the airlines have an advantage uh, uh, from uh, these investments. They want to encourage self-servicing. They want to empower leisure and business travelers and, and one of the things we've got to remember is that they look to enhance their values by providing these apps and so the investment pays off they can reduce staff on check-in they can reduce staff wandering around the airport um, and business travelers get the benefits of having the empowerment to look for upgrades look for different seats on the aircraft know about the chaos that may be happening so somewhere else so these investments pay off in many many ways and it, it makes a lot of sense to, to, to okay. Money, right? So you've got uh, you, you you can. It's easier to check in. It's easier to book in the first place. It's easier to pick uh, pick your seat on the on the flight. Uh, easier to find your baggage. But ultimately, this technology doesn't really save you time when it comes to all the queues you have to go through and all the security you have to go through. Do they? No, we haven't got a silver bullet for the huge problems of, of the reality of airports and air travel. Um, major bottlenecks occur um, at classically at places like immigration and uh, in, when we've got uh, increasing travel volume at peak times, this is always going to be a trouble. I mean, could they? Could new technology help speed up security, um, iris recognition or something like that? Biometrics is a very important uh, concept and is being deployed now effectively. 
to challenge these bottlenecks, but unfortunately there is no silver bullet here because around the world different governments have different perspectives on what the uh, protocols are, so we can only do limited trials at the moment. So, so the misery of long, long queues at the airport isn't going to go away anytime soon. The other question is, how do you get everybody to use these apps? Because, you know, my mum and dad are getting on a bit. They are definitely not using smartphone apps. They're still using the, the local travel agent. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, we have this big split between business and leisure and people who are regular road warriors and people who are ad hoc travelers. And one of the problems with apps is usage is critical. If you're not using uh, an app a lot, you, don't, you ignore it eventually. Um, with low-cost airlines, we've seen a, an explosion in, in leisure travel. To get people to actually um, use uh, apps uh, of the older generation, I think... Um, unlikely but um, the millenniums and younger people are clearly totally tuned into this and they are do we want an app for everything I mean I've got a phone full of apps yeah yeah well we know definitely it's plateaued um, downloading of apps has become uh, plateaued uh, in this area but obviously what we need is a silver bullet and Google trip offers that for the leisure market they've uh, introduced an enhancement there which I think could yields fantastic results because it's familiarity. It's a bit like Facebook. We need to be very familiar with the product. So where um, do you see it going? What's the next big app? Well, um, well business and leisure, the, 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 the opportunity for business travelers to book their own flights and switch away from their corporate deals and make uh, uh, switching behavior will be very, very important for the airlines. So some of the more generic apps, I think, potentially have more uh, challenging issues for airlines in, the, in that respect. The travel management companies can introduce those. Um, for leisure, I think uh, we are in a new uh, opportunity with Google in, in, involved in the process. I think that this will be a game changer. I think we'll see very interesting uh, developments as a result. Okay, well, personally, I'm holding out for teleporters, but they're probably a way off yet. Nick, thank you very much indeed for that. Nick Coleman there. Now we're going to end with our insight bite, a little something that we think you should know. And today we want you to take a look at these powerful images captured by Brazilian photographer Philippe Dana. All these pictures are of families with babies affected by the Zika virus. Dana had already photographed these children in hospitals and their homes, but in this instance wanted to capture the love their families have for them. And that's all for now. I'm Shuli Ghosh. That was Insight.